It kind of had that like muffly sound, but now it just sounds super crisp. It sounds really good. I'm really glad it sounds really good because there's a lot of work to get these in. <laughs> Here's a bass. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more BMW content and visit us at keysmotorsports.com. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install the Beamer Tech Alpha One speakers in Edwin's G20 M340i. The main emphasis of today's video is to show you DIY step-by-step -step how to install these speakers in your G20. It's gonna be the same process if you have a 330, 340, so forth. Also, if you have a bass or a Harman system like Edwin has here. Now, if you have the Harman, you're just gonna have more speakers. And I do wanna say that there are a variety of options. Say you're just looking for subs, you can do that. There's various packages that you can get for your car. So say you don't wanna do the whole thing, you don't have to. You can pick and choose what you wanna install. Now, when it comes to actually reviewing what the speakers sound like, we realize that YouTube compresses everything. So no matter how good of a microphone we record with, you could be listening with studio grade headphones or dollar store headphones. It's not gonna sound all that good. So we're going to give you our opinion on what it sounds like and the subtle differences and whatnot. But I just wanted to set the expectation that listening to a YouTube video, no matter how good your speakers are, YouTube is compressing our video and it just, it's never gonna sound right. You have to really hear these in person. So with that, we use Epidemic Sound in our videos, if you were curious about that. Um, it's copyright free music. You do have to have a paid subscription. So we are going to play an Epidemic Sound that's copyright free. So let's jump in the car, see how it sounds, and then we'll install the speakers and then we'll give you our opinion on how it sounds. All right, we have our song all queued up. Let's do our initial test. So from the factory, the Harman sounds really good. So really curious to see what the Beamer Tech is gonna do on top of the Harman. Um, the song has a good mix of highs and lows and I mean, it's a Harman system. It sounds really good from the factory. So let's get those speakers installed and do another test to see how it sounds. All right, so let's start with the door speakers because they are the most time consuming because you have to remove the door cards. Now, it's the exact same process to physically remove the door cards, except I believe the driver's side has one more connection. So basically, there's a T20 screw under this little cover here, and then there's also a T20 screw under here that needs to be removed. So let's start high, we'll work our way low, and then I'll show you how to pop the clips. So you're gonna need to pull the handle and we need to remove this little piece of plastic trim. So there's basically a little clip over here, a little clip over here, and then it snaps in. So it's always a good idea to remove this corner first and then kind of work your way down. Now, it's so tight, it's gonna be really hard to get any kind of trim tool in there. So if you carefully, keyword is carefully, take a pick tool, you can start to get it and pop it out just like that without marring the plastic and then just continue to pop it out. So as I said, there's a little clip over here, a little clip over there, slides in, snaps in. Then once you do that, you can see the T20. Okay, so we can remove our T20 here. Then you can remove the other one. So once you have the two screws out, it's just held in with a variety of different fasteners. Um, and I'm gonna show you that once it is off the vehicle. What I like to do now is I like to take a trim tool like this one here and then just carefully slide it in near the door card and then you'll start to hear some of the clips release. So once you get it to a point here, I like to get my hand and then just slide it along and then as I slide it, you'll hear the various clips pop. Okay, so I can take this out. Now, you don't wanna just rip it off because it's actually hooked on the top. So once we get all of these off, okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to lift it up and then pull it down just like this. So as you can see, you have your door latch, which just pulls up and out like that. Now, when you go to reinstall it, you need to make sure that this is pushed in. It is spring-loaded, so it shouldn't be an issue. And then that'll snap in like that. 
let's pull that out of the way. And then there's another clip over here. There's two little tabs. You just push left and right. So you just push on these little guys right there and then that'll pull up and your door card is free. So if you look along here, you can see all of the various clips that are holding this in. So the trick is to get your trim tool between the door card and the door, get it close to one of these clips, it's gonna pop, and then just carefully slide your hand along and then pop it. And then as I said, the top of the door actually hooks down and hangs down. So don't, you know, some older cars, you just pull them straight out. But with BMW, it kind of hooks on, hangs in place, and then you pop it back in. So I'm gonna go put this in a safe place and then we'll continue. Okay, so looking at the inside of a door that has Harman speakers, you're going to see a tweeter up here and a mid-range down here. Whenever you're dealing with the speakers, don't touch the cone, it's not good for the speaker. Um, we're gonna start up high, so disconnect the little blue. And then all you're going to do is just rock this down like this. Okay, so with this gently pried down, we can see this piece of foam and then we can see our actual speaker. Okay, and then we are ready to remove the tweeter. It is held in with these little clips. There's a clip over here, over here, over here, and so forth. So if you just take a, a pick tool or a trim tool, press one of those clips, you'll be able to get it. Just make sure it doesn't go flying out. And then we are ready to install the Beamer Tech Alpha One tweeter. So if you take a look at the foam, we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna move our little sticker out of the way. And just remember the way that it goes. So it goes down, out, and around. So your new one goes in, goes around, goes up through here, and then down. Now you will notice that there was this nice little cutout for this on here. However, the Beamer Tech one is further down. That's because it needs to be wired slightly different. You're gonna take your tweeter, just gonna bend this back, now the reason that we're just bending it back and we're not actually removing it is because it's kind of a pain in the butt. So this is gonna be much easier. So you just clip it in as you heard that audible clip and then just push the foam back into place. Push that up and we are good to go as far as that is concerned. So now we are ready to remove the mid-range. So grab your T20. There are three T20 screws holding this in. Before I get too far, I do want to unplug these two connections. You'll notice that the wiring is similar over here as it is up to the tweeter because that's actually a little tweeter extension wire, but we're not going to be using that, hence why this is so long. Okay, so I'm just gonna push those out of the way, continue removing these. And then once you do that, you just kind of pop it out. It has this little rubber gasket, so sometimes it gets a little suction, but it's not glued in or anything. Um, now, another thing that you're going to notice when you're looking at this, other than how bad it looks compared to the Beamer Tech one, um, you're going to notice it's kind of a, a triangle with the screw hole. So there's two that are pretty close and then one that is pretty far away. The one that's pretty far away goes down here and you're going to know it right away because it only screws in one way. Okay, so next you're going to need this little splitter that is in your box. And basically, if you look at the factory Harman speaker, you're going to notice that there is basically a speaker in for your mid-range and then there's an out, which is what actually powers your tweeter. Now with the Beamer Tech one, they just do it a little bit different. They just have one input and they also have this little splitter. So where OEM is fully integrated, this is just a wire, so um, not a huge deal. So what we're gonna do, you're gonna take your extension cable, you're gonna plug it in just like that. And then over here, you're going to route the wire through this little hole in the plastic. So just navigate this through there and that's gonna make sure that nothing gets pinched once we actually go to install this. So it's gonna to wanna to try to pop out on you. So just get everything lined up. And then you can start to reinstall your screws. So I'm just gonna get one in to hold it. And then when you're tightening this, just make sure you don't go too tight. Just snug it up, because you don't wanna crack the plastic. Okay, when you look at the new Beamer Tech wiring harness, you are going to see that this one up here is for the in, and then the wire that hangs down is for the tweeter. So we're going to take this wire here, this connection I'll say, we're gonna plug that in, 
And then this one is going to get plugged in up here like so. And if there's any confusion, it is all labeled. Um, now you're not going to need this little wire. You're not going to need this one. That one's pretty secure. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zip tie and tape these up, make it nice and neat so there's no rattles inside my door. Okay, so as you can see, I routed everything up, cleaned it up, and then in spots where there was like one of those blue connections, I don't want any hard plastic rattling. So I like to use Tessa tape. It's basically wire loom tape, um, very similar to what BMW, actually might even be the same stuff BMW uses. Um, so with that, we are ready to put the door panel back on. So as you noticed before, we have all of these different clips. Now, if you've done this on an F-Series, you're going to be familiar with these typically they're white or a different color. Um, BMW has these like self-locking tabs now, which you're going to see, which is, are these white ones. So if it looks like this, you're good to go. But sometimes what'll happen is they'll kind of like bust apart like this one. And basically you just have to take a, a screwdriver, you just put the little hat thing back on to make it look like that. Otherwise it's not going to go on right. So basically we are ready to put this back on. So let's reconnect our connections here. So with the electrical connection, just clips in. And then with the other one, this just slides in like that and then presses down. And then you need to make sure that you go up and over your door lock indicator. Then you push towards the window and slide the door card in like that. And then once you've done that, you are finally ready to start locking it in. Just make sure that you have everything lined up first. So just take a peek. Everything looks good. And then you can just get everything clipped back in. Pop. One other thing I want to let you know, make sure that you have this piece here on the outside of the door card. Otherwise, there's these clips and it's not going to clip in right. So make sure that you put it like that and then all of your clips will just pop in. All right, so once you have that door card nice and secure, you can take those screws and reinstall them. Now, while you're here, you might wanna lock the door lock and just check it to make sure that everything is properly latched. You don't want to not have it correct, shut the door, and then you lock it out of the car and have to do it again. Um, so that's way more of a pain than butt. So with that, we're going to take this, remember it slides in like this and then clips in, okay, snaps in like that. And this door is 100% done. So as you saw, it's a pretty easy process and it really shouldn't take you all that much time. So now that we've done the door, we're going to move to the passenger side subwoofer. And again, all of this is the exact same as on the other side. Um, so to get here, what we need to do is remove the seat. Now we're not gonna pull the seat out of the car, if you pull the seat out of the car, you're going to get an airbag warning that the dealer needs to clear and it's kind of a pain in the butt, so don't do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to get around it. You're going to need a T50, which is a Torx bit. Um, it's very commonly found on Torx sets that you buy at the store. So we're going to release this screw and then there's another one over here. Technically they're bolts. So it looks like this, be careful. It is kind of greasy normally. We're just going to leave it on the all-weather mat for a second. Now, the trick that I like to use is once you have the seat here, I'm going to slide the seat up because we need access to the back ones. And then what you want to do once you can start to see them is you're going to want to rock the seat forward. And what we're going to do after we get those out is we're actually going to rock the seat back and lay it on the back seat. That way we don't have to actually remove it. All right, so I just added a little bit of a swivel here. These you typically can't go straight on. So, a little swivel does a big job. And then we can rock the seat. Now when you do this, just make sure that your wire here has some slack. You don't want it super tight and you don't want um, a lot of pressure on that. Oh, look, 
Ricola. Today's video is brought to you by Ricola. <laughs> All right, so now that you're here, there are four little T20 screws that you need to remove. And you can take that. Oh, that's ugly. Okay, so now that we have the subwoofer exposed, we can see the harness, uh, the little connection back here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just put your nailer, a little screwdriver on there. And if you couldn't see what I was doing, I was basically just pressing down on this little tab right there, and then that'll pull right out. Now, if you look around the speaker, we're gonna try to do this in the car because you're probably gonna do it in the car as well. You're going to see four of these T20s. So there's a T20 over here, there's a T20 over here, there's a T20 over here that you can't really see, and then there's one over here that you can't really see. So with that, I am going to remove them. So if you take a, a screwdriver and a pick tool, there you go, look at that. That actually worked out better than I thought it would. Um, so what I did is I just pried a little bit here and then I was able to get it to pop out. And now it comes out easy. Perfect. That worked out great. Oh, actually look, it wasn't glued in. Um, it's just whatever this sticky residue is, it's more like a, like a sealant. So, although it might seem like it's glued in, I guess some of them aren't. Um, so that was good news. But anyway, let's take a look at this. So here's a little side-by-side -side of the OEM Harden and also the Beamer Tech. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to install this in the reverse order that we remove this. Remember that your plug is going to go in the back. So this goes in just like that. Then you can reinstall your little screws. And you wanna make sure that this sits nice and flat. So what I would recommend doing, you know, just like when you're tightening lug nuts, put one in, don't actually fully tighten it down, and then go across, and then go across, so that way everything is, is evenly pulling down. And then just final tighten it. I don't think there's really a torque spec, just make sure that it's nice and even and nice and snug, otherwise you will get rattles. Okay, so now that that's fully installed, we're gonna take this little grate, and we're gonna reinstall it. Then once you've done that, you can reinstall your seat bolts. Okay, so now that we've done the subwoofer under the seat, we're moving along to the dash. So your dash is very flexible. Take a trim tool like this, and then what you wanna do is just very carefully start to pry up and release these tabs here. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of force, so just go slow, take your time, and try to pull them out as, as straight as you can. Okay. So as you can see, BMW wanted to make sure that this didn't go anywhere. Why'd they use such strong clips? The world will never know. Oh. Okay, so here is a look at those way too powerful clips. So it's a metal clip on, and it's on both sides. So um, I don't know why they made it so difficult, but you just have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, and then everything will pull pretty much straight out. So with that, let's continue. Okay, for this next part, I would highly recommend one of these little ratchets with a T20 on it, because you need to remove a T20 over here, one over here, one over here, and then there's one over here, and then this whole plastic piece is going to pull out. Okay, then what you're gonna do, is you're gonna carefully put your hand here, and here, and it's going to, again, it's, it's got a gasket around it, so it's a little bit difficult to take out. So you can probably hear it starting to lift as I pull up, if you have a trim tool, it's gonna make it easiest if you can sort of get under it a little bit too. There we go. They were like, hey, let's put some glue under the screw holes in case the screws fail. 
All right, so just to clarify, whew, you can see the glue is just where the screws go. All right, so now we've done that. Well, that came out easy. We'll just take that out and let's do this outside of the car. Okay, so now that we have this little piece out of the car, you can basically see how it works. So what I'm going to do first is disconnect our tweeter from our mid-range. And we're going to remove the three T20s, as you'd expect. Okay, once you have all those screws out, that's gonna slide out like that. We'll put it just for comparison again next to our Beamer Tech speaker. Then over here, you can do the same thing. Um, with this, it's a lot easier because you have the whole thing in your hand, but basically I just press in one of these tabs while pushing up, and then that's going to pop it out. And then you can just remove it like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab one of my tweeters here. Just gonna take this, just snaps right in. Looks nice as well. Okay, so once again, it's that triangle design, only goes in one way. If you don't have it in the right way, don't force it, because it's wrong. <laughs> okay, so now you need another one of these little splitter guys. Um, so our, our in is going to be up there. The one with the plug here goes in here. It's the only place it can go. And then you just wanna be aware this one down here is for the tweeter out. And then again, this one is for the ends, so don't, don't flip flop them. So this is gonna go like this. You can lock that into place. And then we're basically just going to have everything over here um, and just wanna make sure that all these wires are basically just nice and neat and out of the way. All right, so we wrapped it around that little wire loom and just to make it a little bit neater we just put some test tape around it the cool thing is when you put this in your car and we'll show you this in just one second but there's this soft piece that it's actually going to rest on so you shouldn't have any rattle concerns so with that let's go install this connection here and put this piece back in the car so here's that stuff i was talking about so it's like i don't know it's like low-grade carpet um it's it's very soft and it's gonna help make sure that everything stays in place. So anyway, I wasn't really concerned without it, but it's nice to have. Right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take the connection, connect that up, and then we're gonna get this. It's gonna pop in just like that. Then you can reinstall all four of these little T20s. Okay, so once that is all installed, take this and then just clip it in. It's amazing how, how easy things go in, but how difficult they are to take out. But anyway, that is done. So the last thing that we haven't talked about is the rear deck. So let's head back there. Okay, so now we are at the rear deck because this is a Harman car. So what you're gonna do, you're just gonna very carefully pop up on this here. We would show you through the glass, but Edwin has tint and you're not gonna see much. Now, BMW, why couldn't you have made the front this easy? This one comes off so much easier. Look at that, nice gentle clips. There's no need for those big metal ones. Come on. This is going to very closely resemble um, what you saw up in the front. So let me start to take out some of these T20s. Now you're probably not going to be able to see much because you're looking through a tinted rear window. But basically I have a, a screw here, screw here, and then the other three that you are professional with at this point. So I'm gonna start with the tweeter. So now you can see our tweeter is free. And now I need to do the other one, the mid-range. Okay. And we can pull this up. Disconnect the tweeter, disconnect the main feed. And this is basically all that it is. So you can see that even BMW makes their wire a little bit longer than it needs to, and then they just tape it up. I'm pretty much gonna do that exact same thing 
except I'm going to use some Tessa tape instead. All right, so at this point we are ready for reinstallation. As I mentioned, this, our, our tweeter has a super long cord and the BMW one is nice and tight. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap up the cord and just wrap it with some Tessa tape so that it's approximately this long because this is really all you need. So with that, I'm going to do that and then I'm just going to go reinstall it. Um, it's been pretty difficult filming through tinted glass, so all you do is just the exact same thing we've been doing. This is probably one of the easiest ones with the exception of that last screw. So with that, I'm gonna get to work, make it happen, and then we'll move on. All right, so then once again, this is for the main, and then this is for the speaker. So I'm gonna have to fish these down in here. Okay, and then the tip of the triangle goes towards you. And then we can get everything tightened down, make sure that everything is tightening down easily, and we're good to go. Okay, then just take your cover, just gently snap into place and you're done. All right, the last thing that we wanna show you since we've kinda started up here and worked our way around the car is how to do a rear door. Um, you will notice that the tweeter is here instead of up top. Um, as far as taking the door panel off, you're gonna be a pro at this because, well, it's exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this apart and then we'll show you the difference in how the tweeter is set into the door. Okay, so what you'll notice on the back door is that this um, for your door latch is significantly shorter and your plug is just a little bit in here and then your mid-range plugs into the door so a little bit different now while we have the door in our hands I'm just gonna pull up some of this insulation we're gonna just pull all this out Okay, set this to the side. And we'll take our new tweeter. Just like the other one, just be very careful. There's a ribbon right there for the ambient lighting. You don't want to mess that up. Okay, and then I'm going to just go here for now. Okay, so now we're going to disconnect our speaker. You guessed it, more T20s. Okay, a little suction. I'm gonna take our, our new one, plug it in first, and then here's the little cutout. You can try to get it underneath the foam if you want. A lot of times it just doesn't really stay. So this is your main in. Just look at this. So your main in is over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie this because I only need a little cord because of how I have it prepared on the other side of the door panel. Okay. Then I'll trim that up. That'll be good there. I do just want to put a little, here it is, my Tessa tape. I want to put some Tessa tape on here just so there's no chance of any rattle. I don't think we're going to have any, but I don't want there to be a chance. So. All right, so at this point, everything is ready for the door panel, and then we'll be done the store. This is gonna go here, make sure you have it plugged in the right way, and it goes one way, and then it's about to get really tight. Sorry to kind of cut you out of there. Okay. I can hear that working. Okay. Another way you can test it is like that. Everything is good. We can start to close this all up. All right, all that works and we are good to go. All right, so at this point, you know how to do a front door, a subwoofer, the dash speakers, you know how to do the deck, and then also the rear door. So there's pretty much nothing that you don't know at this point. So everything is pretty much reverse on the other side. We're not gonna walk through step-by-step step every single door because it'll make this video two hours and it's gonna show you stuff that you already know. So off camera, Zach is going to help me finish up the speakers and then we're gonna jump in and see how it sounds. All right, so I just finished the driver door speaker and 
The only real difference is it has this style connection because it needs a lot more wire. So I um, just want to show you how to do this instead of pushing either side. Basically, this little cam lock, it's going to be locked in like that. And basically, you just press on this little button. And then as you press this down, it's going to work the clip out. And then when you want to reinstall it, which I'm actually getting ready to do, you put it in as far as it'll go. And then you push this and it'll actually pull itself in and then lock it in place. So other than that, everything's been pretty similar. Just this one little change. All right, we are finally done. And I can't wait to see what this sounds like. So let me sync up the phone real quick here. So immediately, it sounds more crisp. I'm not an audio, I'm not an audio technician by any means, but the bass hits really nice and it just sounds very clear. Not that, how do I explain this? This is really hard to, this is why we don't do audio reviews. <laughs> um, no, it sounds, it just sounds super clean. That's really the best way to, to explain it. It sounded before like, you know, like when you have a speaker and you have like something over it and it kind of muffles it, it kind of had that like muffly sound, but now it just sounds super crisp. It sounds really good. I'm really glad it sounds really good because there's a lot of work to get these in. <laughs> Here's a bass. <laughs> Feel it all through my body. It's amazing. So Zach has like a what is a 14 inch subwoofer in his 15 car? Inch. 15 inch. <laughs> These things hit pretty good. For yeah, for under for under seat little subwoofers that are OEM replacements unbelievable what you can do with just speakers. I think these sound really, really, really nice. Um, yeah, the best way that I can explain it is the bass hits harder and it sounds a lot more crisp and clean. Um, sounds like the, the factory system sounds really good. And it's amazing because when you listen to the Harman originally, it's like, it sounds really good. Like, honestly, it's like, ah, uh, why should I upgrade? But if you are looking for just more clarity and just more refined sound that comes with the car. Um, totally the way to go. Now, if you have bass, it's like super drastic um, because you're basically going two stages up. You're going, you know, above even Harman. So if we put Harman in the middle, but yeah, overall, I'm super happy with this. I'm sure Edwin is going to be thrilled and is going to love it. And yeah, I just, my, my car doesn't sound this good. So I'm just going to, Play the song again. <laughs> so anyway, once again, my name is Brian. That's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more BMW content and visit us at keysmotorsports.com. And for links to all of the products and tools we used in today's video, be sure to see the description below. I'm going to listen to the song, but I'll see you in the next video.